Good morning, sled addicts. So uh, we are all uh, out riding. We are heading on A West. We're about to uh, cross over the Frederick House River, uh, and that will take us up to the Greenwater Pit Stop, which is where uh, the Polar Bear Riders Snowmobile Club meets the Smooth Rock Club, which is Arctic Riders. So we're just about to come over that river. Woo! Just about to come over that river crossing right now. They've been flooding it like crazy for weeks, uh, and now it's finally thick enough to safely cross. I don't think there's enough for the groomer yet, but that will come soon. This trail over here is a little bit bumpy. It's not too bad. One of the main reasons is probably because the, because the groomer can't get across that ice crossing we just passed over yet. He has to go all the way around on Highway 11, and it's, it takes a long time, so I don't think they've groomed this section of it in a few days. But even though they haven't groomed it, it's still not bad. A few bumps here and there, but nothing uh, an XRS can't handle. Yeah, so they're uh, just checking our paperwork and making sure everything's good. Nothing about COVID, no issues there. Just making sure we have trail permits and uh, license stickers and all the paperwork's up to date, which is their job, and they should be doing it. And I want them to ticket everyone that doesn't have a permit. So I'm happy they're out here. Super nice guys, so no issues here. Stop by the OPP 15K out of Cochrane. Yeah, look at these 550 fans. Look at the lineup right there. Enjoy your ride. I'll let you guys go ahead too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're not going to enjoy the day. Thank you. <laughs> so that was just a nice fun stop by the OPP. Doing their job exactly what they're supposed to do. Checking permits, checking registration, making sure everything's legit. And uh, yeah, I'm happy they're out here. It's a good thing. We, we are just about to... Uh, Pass by, we'll stop for a dart break at uh, Jamie's Corner. So it's my buddy Jamie. Uh, we came up riding to Cochrane three years ago. And there's a turn up here that's like a second east of the uh, uh, Greenwater Pit Stop, where the cutoff is if you want to go to the fire tower in Cochrane. Um, and basically the, the trail makes a sharp left, but it looks like it goes straight because the trail does continue straight, but that's not part of the sled trail. And my buddy Jamie continued going straight and there was a little lip in the trail and he hit it at an angle and flew himself right into the trees. When I got there, machine was upside down, track spinning, and he was head first in the snow. So I went and pulled him out, ran him back to Cochrane. He uh, didn't break his elbow, but he tore some ligaments. Um, and yeah, he is okay now, thank God, and we got the machine fixed, so there were no worries. But. Nonetheless, uh, my buddy Kenny, who's the president of the Polar Bear Riders, I told him about it and he goes, okay, we'll put up a sign. So now there's a sign that says Jamie's Corner. When you're coming from west or east, you'll see it. And we're gonna see it in about a second here. Should be coming up. Oh, in a minute. Oh, there it is. We missed it. But here is Jamie's Corner. See, it looks like the trail goes straight. All right, so I uh, got the opportunity from Andrew to finally try a turbo. I've been wanting to try one of these 900 turbos for quite some time. And I know he's been riding one for a few years and absolutely loves it. This one's actually got a fully upgraded Elka suspension. So pretty much just as good, if not better than an XRS. And the mid-range, immediately I can tell it's just fantastic. We just put some new carbides on it last night as well, so it seems like the handling is pretty good too. And they just sound cool. I mean, to hear the turbo spinning, especially when you let off the gas, it's, it's really neat. All right, so definitely doesn't have the same pull in my opinion as the 850. There is a little bit a hesitation and I remember that from riding my uh, Skidoo 1200s. I had two 1200s for quite some time and uh, the XR was cable, throttle was great, was instant, very much like a two-stroke 
And then when they switch to this throttle by wire, it's all electronic, obviously, and uh, it's certainly a little different. Certainly miss the quietness of the four strokes, though, for sure. I love the four strokes, how they just pull and pull and pull. It's great. And to me, the 850 is just kind of a little more instant on that upper RPM for sure. I mean, the four strokes have that kind of low mid range grunt. The sled handles great. Elka suspension is actually fantastic. I like it. That's just Jesse talking in my ear on the communicators asking me how I like it. Yeah, I mean the low end and mid range in this thing is sick. Like over these stutter bumps, it's just awesome. So the only thing I would 100% add to this machine, like I do on all my sleds, is uh, the riser height. Just so when you're standing, you get that little added height. It makes it a little bit easier on the arms. That'd be my only recommendation for them at this point. At the end of the day, they're all good. I mean, all these manufacturers are making amazing machines these days. It's like a night and day over what we used to ride. I remember my first sled was a 1990 Safari that my dad brought home. I think he paid 900 bucks for it. it didn't even have a snow flap on it. You know, in those days, we'd, we rode for 10 kilometers and called it a day. I've had Polaris's, have had Articats, but for me, really, nothing, nothing's like this to do. I am interested in a VR1. I definitely want to try one of those, but um, I just love the way the dudes ride. And certainly notice the wind protection also on this one is awesome. So I've been running my low windshield. I brought my other one, I just didn't put it on, but it does make a huge difference especially with the high speed running. We're now on the river, on the other side of this river is the uh, Moonbeam Snowmobile Club. So we're gonna head into Moonbeam for some gas, do a local ride on in, within Moonbeam, and then uh, we're gonna continue on our way to Hearst. Perfectly groomed. This trail is awesome. We are about to, uh, in a few minutes, we're gonna turn left uh, onto the L123, which is gonna take us into Moonbeam for gas, maybe a pizza, or we might just continue to cap and get a subway and cap. We'll see. And the Moonbeam Clubhouse. All right, we just filled up gas in Moonbeam and the trails, as soon as we got to Moonbeam, were absolutely superb. They're fantastic, 10 out of 10. So the plan right now is we're going to run to Cap and in Cap's casing, we're going to probably grab a bite to eat. There's uh, trails, trails that will run from there, obviously, to Hearst. And we might do this one trail that we've actually never tried up here. And uh, I think it's actually a local trail here. So we might do that before we head over. So just uh, riding here with Jesse in the front there and then Costa behind him. I'm sure Jesse told you guys a little bit about the incident that we had last night. Unfortunately, it's always something with us, but hey, that's how it goes with snowmobiling. Our buddy Gord is getting used to his new turbo and unfortunately he uh, ended up putting it into a tree. But thank God, absolutely nothing wrong with him and honestly not a lot of damage to the machine. It was literally just a, an A-arm and he's good. So hopefully they'll get it all fixed up and the uh, plan now is we'll, the three of us are going to Hearst for tonight and then we'll head back to meet them tomorrow. We talked to Kenny on the way up, so Kenny Johnston, the president of Polar Bear Riders Club, that uh, is going to meet us. He's away for the weekend and said he's going to come and meet us probably for a couple of beers or something.
So excited to see Kenny. We see, we've see we seen him, we usually see him a couple times a year and also see him down at the show. And there was no show this year, which sucked. So he'll come and hang out. Unfortunately, we don't get to go out for dinners. We've got to play it safe in terms of all the rules for uh, COVID. So what we've been doing is uh, essentially just ordering uh, takeout. So we had JR's for dinner last night. I usually get ribs every time we come up and they were delicious. Jesse just went and picked up the food. So we're, we're doing our best to, to take as many preventative measures as we can given the situation, but just happy to be out riding with the boys and enjoying Northern Ontario. So this is a nice little local trail in Moonbeam that Jesse and I actually have never done. It's a nice tight trail. The one thing I did notice coming here though is there's tons more snow. So Cochrane definitely has nowhere close to the amount of snow that they've got here. You can see the trees are absolutely filled with it. Jesse up to more stupid shit. <laughs> We're just pulling into uh, Matisse. Uh, so basically, in terms of the trails, the um, it was pretty bumpy uh, across to Smooth Rock. Across Smooth Rock. Uh, to Moonbeam, but once we got onto the Moonbeam trails, they've essentially been mint ever since. And uh, we're probably just an hour out of being in Hearst. So uh, we're gonna get there soon, and the trails have been awesome. Just wanted to give you guys an update, and uh, we'll do a little ride for a little bit, and you can see how these LED lights are working, and they're doing a fucking amazing job. So yeah, enjoy. If you liked that video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the Sled Addicts YouTube channel where we release content on everything snowmobiles. Also hit that bell icon so you can be updated every time we release new videos.